brighten up those already bright mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the Cabin. Mornings at the Cabin. Oh, it's been so long. I feel like I've been gone for months. But it has been three weeks. I've been gone for three weeks, which is a good portion of the summer. I want to thank you guys for not having a summer while I was gone. Wonderful stuff. Very sweet of you. What's it like inside Area 51? Oh, God. Okay, well, first of all, let's talk about the smell. The smell is not great. Uh, it's You're talking about rotting alien bodies. You're talking about a bunch of, like, Kyles all together. They live in each other's base or their parents' basements, <laughs> drinking Monster Energy drink, and they're all there just, like, getting stretched out and, you know, sweaty. And it's not a good... It wasn't a good look for anybody. Did you get the memo that it was all a joke? Huh? It was all a big joke? No. Apparently. What? They didn't tell you guys that? We were there, man. It was no joke. Oh. It was no joke. Outside of Area 51, it was it was a madhouse. There was at least two dozen people there, and they were <laughs> jacked up. <laughs> they wanted to see some aliens. And I feel like I saw some. Not from another planet, mind you. But maybe some from just around the <laughs> around the area. Some things that can't be explained. Yeah, absolutely, no absolutely. Why are there so many nipples on that guy? Anyway, um, <laughs> it was a very interesting experience. And for those of you who don't get the inside joke, I was in Scotland and Ireland for three weeks. Ah, which yeah bears some similarities. Believe me, yes, it does. <laughs> um, there are some things going on in the UK that are just right out of comic books. Um, oh, you bet, Boris Johnson. <laughs> That was that was one of them. You mean Gary Busey, who will play him <laughs> in the inevitable movie to follow. Uh, yeah, that happened while I was there. Um, not a lot of talk about it. Nope, most people didn't really seem to mind, which is, I guess, their privilege. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter with you. Sarah, also here, but does not have a mic to her face, so therefore does not exist within this room. <laughs> do you want... Now's, the, now's the time. Do you want to get on mic? Sarah, if you want to break that down. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Hi. Morning. Hi. All right. Mic's off. Um, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so it's, hurt. Uh, don't be. Don't be. It's coming from a, a place of uh, total pettiness, um, which is just how I am. Uh, just coming back into town. I've been in back in town since Friday, I think. I don't know. All the days are melting together. I have no idea what I did on which day. I was talking about it yesterday with Phoenix, and it was just like, what were we doing two weeks ago? Yeah. Whatever. All just kind of melding into one. Well, kind of. We just yeah. did so much. I mean, this was a vacation that was not, it was obviously a vacation away from work and away from, in, in, in another country. There wasn't a lot of relaxing going on. Mm -hmm. We had, we were chocked full the whole way. So I'll just kind of quickly recap where we went over the days. So we landed in Glasgow. Next day, went to Edinburgh. The day after that, went to the Loch. We went to Loch Ness mm -hmm. and we spent a night there. And then we did, uh, then we went to Inverness and we spent a night at Inverlochy Castle, which was incredible and just cost way too much money. Um, Did you check in with the uh, the Area Fifty One uh, equivalent of uh, the Loch Ness monster? They're going to. Uh, there is a guy there, and um, oh god, it's flush. I had his name. This one is escaping me, but he's a guy. He holds the world, the Guinness World Record for basically longest guy to ever watch Loch Ness. He's been doing it for about thirty years, mm. and he's got a place. He's just like set up his little camper on the side of uh, on the side of the lake. Yeah, and um, and has been watching it every day. Since like 1990, but or I mean that guy. That guy's whatever. legit. I meant the Facebook group. Oh, the Facebook group yeah. of Loch Ness. Yeah, yeah, no, they weren't ready to charge. They, they weren't ready. They weren't oh, ready. Okay. No, okay. they were very focused on what was going on with their right. American brethren over at Area 51. Very preliminary, um, which plans. was nothing. <laughs> um, but Loch Ness was beautiful. I've always I've wanted to go there since I was a kid. Obviously, because I was obsessed with dinosaurs. Didn't see a dinosaur, so no like, way. A bunch of BS. At man. least you'll never tell. That's right. I won't because I am under threat of <laughs> catapult. Um, so uh, too many castles to count. That's the thing. Like, I mean, all the castles are like, oh, they look so cool. There's so much history, and then like after the like the twenty eighth one, you're like, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> and then like sometimes like a castle's like got a deep, rich history, battles, and it was put here to to stop the hordes of blah 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 and and to oppress indigenous people or whatever. And then and then another castle is just like, well, a rich family came here. They tried to build a <laughs> they tried to build a twenty eight hundred acre castle, but they ran out of money. So yeah. here's the castle that they left. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's. I mean Beautiful. In, in fact, after about the year 900, it was very difficult to tell who the indigenous people were. Well, in absolutely. England, well, that's Because everyone right? had invaded everyone else enough times. Exactly. They're like, well, I've been here 56 years. I'm indigenous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is very true. Um, so while there is a hint of colonialism and uh, world oppression within the British Empire, not much so much with on the land itself, mm. which is kind of nice. Yeah. Um, okay, so after Inverlochy Castle, we went to... 
Where'd we go after that? Oh my god. It's there's so much going on. Uh and after Inverlochy Castle we went back uh through to Glasgow again. And then Tell your old man store us. story. Old man of store? Yeah. Oh, we went to the Isle of Sky after Inverlochy. That's right. We yeah. went to the Isle of Sky for two days. Didn't stop raining the entire time. So there's this hike called the Old Man of Store. It's just this natural rock formation uh, created by glaciers and, and rain and erosion and, and wind. And um, so you walk it's up. It's always and, glaciers. It's always glaciers. Yeah. But it glaciers. Yeah, yeah, they created everything. You know, once they're melted, I'll be happy. Because then we won't have to hear about them anymore. <laughs> up on their pedestal. <laughs> uh, literally on shelves. Um, so you walk up about a thousand feet, and like most of it's just a little trail winding back and forth. And there's a couple of trails that go off in a bunch of different directions. It's part of a park, so there's just trails everywhere. So we walked all the way up, and we found this little sheer, like little like gravel rock face almost. And we're kind of like trudging, hand over fist, knees up, and all the way up to the top. And like got up there, and it's super windy and super foggy. And we made this little video because like we honestly thought like there were gale force winds up there. Honestly thought like if we if we die up here. <laughs> Made a little videos to our friends saying, "Hey, if you find this, take care of our dog." Um, so we got up there, had a little had a little chat session. We're like girding up our loins to travel back down and without slipping, and then girding up your loins, <laughs> just like just gathering them up from There's below nobody us. Else around, that's it right. It was foggy. It was got foggy. An opportunity. That's our right. loins were everywhere. Our loins were everywhere. Just pick pick them up, pick them up, and put them in the right place. Um, <laughs> and as we were going down, I just like there's another side, and it just because of the mist, you couldn't see anything. Like, it, it could have been a sheer face just drop off. So it was like, give me a second. The mist cleared a little bit. I'm just going to check the other side. I look down the other side, and it's like, oh, here's a well-worn trail with basically steps in the dirt where we could have walked up the other way. Oh, people, so, too. Here yeah, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. There's a whole tour group here. No, we were the only ones up there because, like, everybody else kind of stopped halfway up because mm. it was super windy and, and cold and butts. I don't know. Once you're warmed up, once you're up that first 500 feet, you're like, ah, let's go for the rest. Yeah. So that was awesome. Take so, any pictures of sheep? Um, there are so many sheep. So many sheep. I, I took one and I just copied it a thousand times because they're <laughs> all the same. Um, but it's, I mean, it is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. It was mm. the Isle of Skye, but like yeah. all over Scotland and Ireland. And, um, it was, it was gorgeous. So Isle of Skye, two days, and then we went to the Talisker distillery while we were there. So I got a nice bottle of brown stuff, which is nice. Um, and then we, uh, went back through to Glasgow, spent a night in Glasgow, flew over to Belfast, two nights in Belfast. And then went around Ireland as well. we'll but did this, but. you visit Babs? No. What? Yeah, no, we couldn't. Oh dear. We couldn't fit oh it in. Dear. How? how I, you you I, already I, knew this. You would have known if we visited. Minutes, I have been watching. Be <laughs> I have been watching Facebook Messenger on my phone for the last five minutes. Yeah. Waiting for the moment that she says, "Hang on, you were where?" And you didn't visit Babs because Glasgow's not like far an from hour right? out of Glasgow. Yeah. Babs. Yeah. So here's the thing. We had no time. <laughs> no time. Sounds to me like you were prattling about on a trail on the Isle of Skye for quite a while. Mm. Well, yeah, it was, you know, I mean, yeah, mm. it's part of the trip. Pop in for a visit. Pop in for a visit. Just say hi. Yeah, all right. You're right. We could have. <laughs> we didn't. Um, the, the trip was very chock full. That's all I'm going to say. I can hear her polishing a saxophone <laughs> right now. <laughs> Wait, why? She's you you missed that you. joke. Oh, yeah. God, you missed cool. the show where she throws oh, no. saxophones. Oh, okay. She's very good at it. <laughs> Inside you don't jokes from when you're on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Babs, I, I apologize. We didn't get a chance. We were also traveling with another couple, so there's also mm. that to take into consideration. Yeah, yeah so. you could just blame them. That's I do blame them. Yeah, perfect. Kyle and Morwenna, you're, you're horrible people. Jeez. Thank you for not allowing us to go visit uh, Ollie's mom. <laughs> Babs, uh, Kyle Collins, and Morwenna Trevenin are the reason we didn't come see you. Um, so other than that, I mean, we went through Belfast, went through, uh, went through Galway, Cork, uh, Killarney, stayed in another castle in Killarney, which was incredible, and then through to Dublin for two nights. And then on the way back, we stayed in Halifax for the night. So yes. it was chock full, um, full of memories that I cannot recall right now because <laughs> they're all just kind of blending together. Um, lots of green, beautiful spaces. Um, got to hang out with one of my dad's best friends. Did uh, you start picking we up any accents? Oh, yes. Yeah. Let's get into that. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast where we cut out all the great music and you're left with the rest. Continuing on our little uh, vacation recap here. I know people are probably tired of hearing about it. It doesn't matter. My show. Um, so we made it into Ireland and uh, you were talking about accents. And yes, I, I am absolutely one of those idiots that'll pick up on it a little bit. Mm. I didn't get into like a full brogue or a full like, 
like Irish accent or anything like that because first of all there's like a ton of different ones for one but also but I what I did get into was like the lilt so I wouldn't be like I I wouldn't I wouldn't go into a full accent but in Ireland I would be like um I would just kind of bah, 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 bah. I would just kind of get into the music of it but I wouldn't ah. I my my words my accent wouldn't change with my words but my intonation would change. Okay. Because it's such a it's such a lovely way to speak. It is. It really is. Yeah. Like and right now off the top of my head I couldn't tell you what it sounds like. I I'm I don't know. Well, let's just not try. No, let's try. <laughs> <It's fine>. Um <laughs> Uh, so that was uh, that was uh, I definitely did, and I was actually expecting that once I came home, I'd have a little bit of it because I'm absolutely n- I know this about myself now that if I live there for a month, mm. like within the first month, I'd be like, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'd be yeah. like fully into the accent. I'd pull a full Madonna and just act like you're a chameleon. Scotch You've said this Ireland. before. I am. You just blend in. I am uh, racially ambiguous, <laughs> is what I am. Um, so I can I can I can fall in anywhere. I found that too. Yeah, I, 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 not, I, not quite anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have that when I was in Scotland because I had a hard enough time just understanding a lot of Scottish oh, it's accents. So awesome though, it's, it's so great. Wicked. Yeah, but like it, you, you get a, a full full Scots come up and just like start speaking at a normal pace, which is really fast. Yeah. apparently in Scotland, it and is. I was just like, ah, you're gonna need to repeat that. I don't what's God, but... What's funny is that the the reverse happens. Mm. Canadians speak really fast as well. So this uh, uh, like we had a couple times, especially my friend Kyle, who speaks very very fast. And right. a couple of people go what. <laughs> just like so they were back and forth not being able to understand each other both speaking english yeah yeah but in ireland i remember after we were there for about a week or so i mm-hmm. remember like walking down the street in dublin talking to nicole and realizing like hearing yeah. myself and realizing i'm kind of speaking with yeah. a little bit of an irish accent and, yeah, you like, get into I didn't, it yeah it just kind of like happened. It's it a was ve- weird. It's a it's a, it's 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 what what is it? What would you call it? a casual accent? There's just kind of a, like a a little bit of a, a, a casualness to it. So it's a very easy way to talk. Yeah. So it's and there's a music to it, which is very lovely. So oddly enough, Ollie has never slipped into Canadian. Not that no, I've ever. Heard. I don't think he can slip into Canadian because what <laughs> what I did realize uh, while I was there when we were speaking in these Irish accents or a little bit of the lilt anyway, the music of it is that like our accent has so many hard corners. And then it's like it you kind of gets garbled in your mouth when you get kind of used to talking like this. Yeah. You know, you start talking like this and you're like, I am speaking English. And it's <laughs> just gargantuan and gross. And it feels like you're chewing on something. Have you just tried to preserve it just for the charming nature of I it? I think what's interesting is that you both think that there's nothing Canadian about this. But if I go home, people will say, oh, really? oh you sound way more Canadian. <laughs> yeah, really? I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah you've uh, you put some of it on, and I think that's. I mean, you've lived here for five years, honestly, within a month. And I, I if I had spent planned to spend a year there, within a month, I'd be full, mm-hmm. full on. Yeah, total douche canoe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I I did fall into the accent a little bit, and I did want to talk about uh, the driving on the left, which is really not that hard. It's it, no. it take takes some time to get used to. It wasn't it wasn't that I was going onto the other side of the road. I didn't do that. What I did do at first was start to veer left mm. while I was in while I was driving left because you veered you're, further left. Well, you're on the right side of the car, and I'm used to the I'm used to the middle line being on right on my right. Right. So like I would my my visual my visual field. I was like, okay, that's where the line should be. So my brain is telling me the line should be right to my left. So I started veering, kind uh. of drifting. Left. Right. Other than that, though, fine. Scotland's mm. roads are terrible. Ireland's roads are not much better, especially through the rural parts. And going 80 kilometers an hour while you have room for one and a half vehicles is legitimately terrifying. Yeah. Why were you doing 80? Because that, that was the speed that's limit. The that's the limit. That's the limit. That's not the recommended. No, no. That's what everyone else was driving, though. <laughs> that's a very big difference. There is a very big difference. You but see, if, in Canada. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's suggested, but like it's one strange. of the one of the saving graces is that like most of the people driving were, especially in the rural areas, were were tourists. Hmm. So they're going at you know at their pace. But then you started getting into a bunch of like locals, and they are going eighty kilometers an hour around these tight bends. You're like, <laughs> every time you pass somebody, you're just like you, you pucker a little bit. Yeah. And it's um, but I mean, other than that. Other than all that terrifyingness, yeah, it was uh, pretty easy. And we had a we had a Kia Sportage in in Scotland. We had a Nissan Qashqai diesel, a Qashqai in uh, in Ireland. So we had a couple of SUVs, which was nice. Yeah. Wow, very nice. And uh, uh, it, I only got called the the number one insult in Scotland 
once, and that was on the second so that was day. First five minutes, right? No, no well, I mean no. the second oh. day. And oh, so the, you had had some time to get used oh, to not, it? Oh, no, not really, because I drove from the I drove from the airport to the hotel, and then we walked everywhere. Okay. Okay. So the next day we were going to pick up our friends Edinburgh and I was making, I had to make a left. So it was, they both lanes were veering left, but only one was going left to where I needed to go. And the other mm. one was going kind of slightly less left. So I was in the lane that was both, they were both pointing left. <laughs> so I was like, oh, and then like Phoenix was like, you're in the wrong lane. I was like, ah, and I, I shifted over to the left and, and my buddy Kyle was like, watch out. And I didn't see this guy <laughs> in my blind spot. I cut him off. We all went, drove towards the Edinburgh airport, which was a good 10 miles away. This guy was with us the entire way and once we 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 I went off to the airport and he kept going straight all I heard was you does it and and it was the c word <laughs> and I was like just gave him a wave and I was like hey that's never happened um <laughs> so that was that was the only time I got called that which was nice amazing yeah you got off quite lightly <laughs> I did I mean or I drive it, very well I drove very well there is time. a 30% chance that that person will turn up at Gavin Radio tomorrow morning oh, you think 10 <laughs> miles was a long time Give to me a bear that grudge yeah yeah, absolutely. The other thing, obviously, it's uh, everything was manual transmission, and the stick is on the left, which is oh, you're driving stick. Oh, got to drive stick. Wow. Yeah, not me. Did you not? No. Huh? We paid extra rent and not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we did not. I actually really liked driving the stick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how, so I didn't want to try. No, that is the not the place to go. Pulling out of Heathrow Airport is is not the yeah. place to be figuring not out. The time. Yeah. Went, went to drive manual. Oh, and we haven't even gotten into the roundabouts yet. Holy jeez. So great. much better, right? Mm. Are they? The following includes poor attempts at Scottish accents. It's certainly a phenomenon on all walks of life. What do you mean? Well, at one point you've got it, then you'll lose it. And it's gone forever. All walks of life. Georgie Best, for example, had it, lost it. Or David Bowie or Lou Reed. Lou Reed, some of his solo stuff's not bad. No, it's not bad. It's not great either, is it? And in your heart, you know that although it sounds all right, it's actually just... So who else? Charlie Nicholas, David Niven, Malcolm McLaren, Elvis Presley. Okay, so what is the point you're trying to make? (sighs) All I am trying to do, Mark is help you understand that the name of the rose is merely a blip in an otherwise uninterrupted downward trajectory. What about the untouchables? I don't rate that at all. Despite the Academy Award? That means nothing. It's a sympathy vote. So we all get old, we can't hack it anymore, and and that's it. Yeah. That's your theory? Yeah. Beautifully bloody illustrated. Scenes from the Academy. Know the movie? Submit your guest to mailbox at cabinradio.ca or send us a message on Facebook for your chance to win gift certificates to some awesome Yellowknife restaurants, including Zehabesha, Main Street Pizza, the Woodyard Eatery, Copper House Restaurant, and Javaroma. Listen to Cabin Radio every weekday to win or download the Mornings at the Cabin podcast. Mornings at the Cabin, Wheeler and Lecter with you. Ollie has scuttled off to do Ollie things, which is... Um, keep this place afloat. Really. I think he's tired of your stories. That's fair enough. He didn't really add anything. All he's like, I had a great weekend too, but I want to ask about your, we'll I, I do want to ask about later, your, I guess. But yeah, I mean, I, you know, I was invited to Dubai and uh, probably going to go. <laughs> <laughs> we were at this place in Galway and like a Galway famously, famously though I didn't know, known for its pizza. Oh, yeah. Okay. And had a, a place called Dobro's and it Dobro's. Was some of the best pizza I've ever had in my life. That's pretty great. And while we were waiting in line because it was about a 30 minute wait, we started talking to this couple from Dubai. She was a food blogger there to do some uh, some test tasting around Ireland. Well, if you know if you meet a food blogger in a line, a thirty minute wait line for pizza, then yeah. like you're probably in the right place. Yes, absolutely. And she and she just actually put up her Instagram post today about it and said it was some of the best pizza she ever had. So wow. We agree on that. And she okay. said if you guys ever come to Dubai, just send me a message and we'll like. We can. We have an extra room, and we can tell you all the great places. To so go. she's out of Dubai. She's out of Dubai. Okay. Yeah, and she was in Ireland for the week or for a couple of weeks. And you don't make person. friends in line. What, what happened to you over there? You're Scott, so you don't charming. Make friend, you don't make friends with salad. That's um, also very true. I, we were there to but get pizza. pizza. I don't make friends in line here. Ah. When I'm when I'm in a different country, I'm a different person. I'm tolerable, <laughs> and also tolerant. <laughs> I'm not as, uh, I'm not as, I guess, I don't know. I don't argue with people as much when yeah. I don't know well, them. Well, you're in a different place. You're a guest. That's right. You want to be open-minded about Absolutely. everything you encounter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
we had a wonderful time in Galway. The Galway Arts Festival was on. We saw wonderful like acts from Australia. It was fantastic. Great trip all around. That's all I'm going to say. I won't talk about it anymore. So okay. what happened while I was gone? Let's see. Racism, mass shootings, collapse of the West. We don't have to talk about that. We can, we can touch on that later. Yeah. How was your weekend, buddy? My weekend was great. So yeah. we did a little uh, Hidden Lake trip. Mm-hmm. Never been before. Have you been to Hidden Lake? I'm assuming you have. Haven't been able to find it yet. Oh, I know. It's it's <laughs> hidden. <laughs> it's hidden. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> Seriously, though. Seriously, though, folks. Hidden Lake is gorgeous. <laughs> have you been? I haven't. You haven't? No. So that's I'm a bad northerner. Just before you get into this, I'm a bad yell knifer. I haven't been to Hidden Lake. I haven't been to Madeline Lake since I was a kid. Um, I, I eh. well, Madeline Lakes. I mean, right there, like you, you, you drive by it on the Ingram Trail. That's right. You, that's right. There it is. Yeah. Um, but that's interesting because Nicole, also a, a born and raised northerner, hadn't been there. Hadn't been there ah. either. It was her first Hidden Lake trip. There you go. So. Uh, yeah, so we had one person who had been there before on our, in our crew mm-hmm. and, uh, and the rest were, were rookies. So I had never, I did my first ever portage, never done that before. Mm-hmm. My shoulders and neck are very sore today. Yeah, it's a really stupid way to travel. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not the best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Canoes are terrible. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, although there was there was an evolution over the course of the weekend. So so of course we stupidly were like, well, we we have to bring our dogs because uh, because we love them and we want to be with them, right? And we want to experience um, things with them because we're those people. <laughs> they want to be near you. <laughs> they want to smell your musk. <laughs> they miss my laugh. <laughs> So of course we we took our dogs, um, and they're not good canoe dogs. No. So that was my anticipation was that was going to be the biggest challenge of the entire weekend was going with a bunch of camping gear mm. and two dogs that are not used to being in a canoe mm. and not tipping the canoe and getting everything wet. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. It was dicey on the way there. Luckily, the water was calm, which we didn't anticipate because Friday was kind of raining and kind of miserable all day. And it was kind of a game time decision if we were going to go up Friday or Saturday morning. Yeah. Turned out to be the greatest call because once it stopped raining, the water was actually like perfectly calm. Nice. We had a nice, you know, even paddle out there mm. um, and, and nothing really to worry about aside from our dogs that were freaking out most of the time. But on the way back, I don't know if it was just because they were exhausted from the weekend. Neither of them made a peep, stood perfectly still. And the waves, like, there were, there were, it was pretty rough on the way back. Like, there was actually, like, white caps because of all the wind yesterday. Damn. And, uh, and Finnegan and Jay were just like, yeah, no, this is cool. I just had to get used to it. Yeah. And so I think now we might actually have some decent paddle dogs. Hey, all right. Do you guys have know. a canoe? Do you own a canoe? We borrowed. You borrowed all of it. You got the canoes. kayaks. Yes, we do have uh, the kayaks. Yeah, we can't really bring. The no, you can't. Anymore. You got to get a double kayak for a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and they got to be tough. able to sit in it, which is tough. Which is also tough. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, it was very, uh, very happy with them. And the weekend was, you know, weather notwithstanding, it was kind of like we kind of got ten minute spurts of yeah. all different kinds of weather. Luckily, no snow. Yeah, but kind of ran the whole spectrum of weather that you could expect in yeah. the Northwest Territories in the summer. And uh, no, it was a lovely weekend. Again, thank you for not having a summer while I was gone. Um, I and I remember I saw reading last weekend. It was it's such a terrible, such a uh, poor turn of events for Le, Le Refuge Farm when they lost a bunch of their a bunch of their stock because of a frost in right. the middle of July. Mm. So when I first heard about the frost, I kind of chuckled. But then I saw the story and I was like, that's really too bad. Yeah. But for the rest of you chuckled um i'm looking at really dark clouds right now just over the horizon so it looks like it's gonna be another beautiful day um so for the weekend it turned out that the getting the dogs in the canoe and having them not tip over did not turn out to be the most challenging part of your weekend the most challenging part of your weekend was trying to get a team together for two slow pitch (laughs) games that were for some reason scheduled back to back on a holiday monday yeah and that we were let known that on the friday evening Unbeknownst to me, we had two slow pitch games that we didn't show up for. Even yesterday. if it was beknownst to you, it would be like, <laughs> why are you scheduling back to back games on a holiday? Yeah, I got home, turned on my phone, and the first text I received was uh, from an unknown number, being like, "Hey, are you guys are you guys fielding a You're team come for or... your game?" I was like, "Ah, uh, pretty sure I double checked Friday that our next game is Wednesday. Check the schedule. Oh no, we have a game on Monday. Oh, we have two games Monday. We back have a double header back. Monday." And we're going to miss both. Both of them. Yeah. Done. Because 
that's what's going to happen yeah. when you schedule two pop-up games three at days the end in of a long weekend. And three days in advance. And then I got a phone call at 7.30 <laughs> and a text being like, hey, you guys fielding a game tonight? <laughs> Called them back, and it was the wrong number, so that one. But at that point, I was freaking out. I checked the schedule for, like, the third time. I was like, did we have a triple header? What is going on here? No, they just had the wrong number. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a, an odd day for the slow pitch league all around. The nice thing is that I think everyone was kind of on the same page. They were just like, we don't really want to show up, so if you guys don't want to show up either, perfect. Yeah. Uh, we got other plans because yeah. it's Monday on it's a long Monday weekend. Holiday. Yeah. Yeah. So that was weird. Probably the last weekend of the summer with any kind of good weather. Oh, yeah. It's fall ball from here on out. You think, eh? Oh. Walking to work, I was like, yep, this is some fall air right this now. This is some fall balls. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, well, there you go. Great weekends had all around once again. Um just tell me more about my trip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will tell. I will say this. You asked me, and uh, not to glorify it, because it's nothing to glorify. Right. Um, I didn't have a Guinness until I got to Ireland. Mm. Once I got to Ireland, me and my friend Mo, who was uh, who is uh, part of the couple that we were traveling with, right? Who we've been traveling with for years. Um, she asked. She asked me how many how many Guinness have you had, and I calculated it in my brain. Too many to drive. 56 in seven days. I had 56 of those beautiful glasses of Blackstone. Holy. Wow. Okay. Um, so I am off the, uh, I'm off the hooch. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm going to try till Christmas. From this point on? From this point on. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast. Wheeler and Lecter and Ollie also coming in. Want to talk a little bit about their weekend as well. Obviously, I had the best weekend out of everybody. Um, well, because like at the end of this two and a half week adventure in which we got barely any rest um, and uh, and it was very jam packed full, we had to come back and move into our new place mm-hmm. the day we got back. So we got back. Well, not the day we got back. We got back at like 10 o'clock, slept uh, and then came in and uh, moved into our new place. We're almost fully moved in. And you know what? There's enough space there that we might actually have some people over. If past precedent, though, is any indication, like this, no one's this allowed in my be, house. And this should all be dragged out for a week. You should be, like, angry and upset about it every morning. What? <laughs> what past precedent are you talking about? <laughs> Your moves of the last No, year? no, no, no. The move is the worst part. So, oh. like, we, we, when you guys, when they help the us out. out like, yeah, the move the out move is in. the worst part, right? Gotcha, and we, we gotcha. got to move most of our stuff into the room of the place we we're moving into, like, a month early. Right, because they allowed us to do that. The right, right, right. Oh, that's, them, that's easy. Then. Incredible. Yeah. Right, but there was still a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So we're still getting some things organized. Put up some pictures yesterday. Mm. You know, dog's still getting used to it. She's a little freaked out. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, She'll that was it. my weekend. Did, did okay. I miss the part where you? Got Should I turn on your mic? Did I miss the part where you got invited to Dubai? Yeah. Have we done that? I got yeah, invited to Dubai. Yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by a food blogger that we met in uh, in line in Galway to get pizza because apparently Galway is known for its pizza. Yeah, I mean, pretty standard stuff, really. Yeah. yeah. Galway is so, it's not known for much. You can have horses. I don't there. know. Galway was pretty sweet. Like, uh, one of the things that we, one of the things, obviously, one of the things that we learned in this big whirlwind tour is, like, this is where we want to spend more time, and this is where mm. we can spend less time. So if we're ever going to go back, more time in Belfast, more time in Galway, and probably some more time in Cork, too. Cork was Cork and Cork's cool. Uh, Sarah, what did you learn about this weekend in terms of where you want to spend more time? Mm. Oh, Fort less, Smith. Less time in Let's trucks with Ollie. To Fort Smith. Oh, yeah. Fort Smith is pretty nice. How was Paddlefest? It was great. Um, yeah, the weather was a lot nicer than last year. Last year it was all rainy and yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, this year it was hot. I went in the water. Disappointing. Couldn't sell nearly as many hoodies this year. No. Nah, or ta- did you sell towels? <laughs> <laughs> hate this nice one. No, I didn't really sell any towels. How about some, sold a few hoodies. Sold yeah. a hat. Yeah, well, good. The hats, but, are, the hats are hot. But I, it's always disappointing when there's warm weather at these things because I, I rely on yeah. that being terrible conditions. We were we were decked out in, in full regalia. I had my hat on. She had her hat on. We both had hoodies on. I got the tattoo on my arm. People were like, what is the sign? And I said, well, it's a cult. Would you like to join? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go to cabinradio.ca. Join the cult. They've got good Indian food. And <laughs> we can give us money. You know what has great Indian food? Ireland. Uh, Scotland as well. We found a place on the Isle of Skye in Port Rey that uh, was the best uh, Indian food I ever had. Paddle Fest sounds yeah, awesome. Yeah, did, did you enjoy talking <laughs> about Paddle Fest? <laughs> there, Sarah? You got at least five words in. Really I know noticed that. this morning that no matter what the topic is, Jesse's going to find a way to relate it to it. Well, I was gone for three weeks. I was gone for three weeks. Yeah. Ah, a big trip. A big trip. I get it. 
I was probably intolerable after our traveling. Well, no, you weren't. You were. You're. You're just level-headed on every. Well, you guys didn't give me a chance to talk much about it. So. I don't really want to hear about it. <laughs> but uh, okay, so for for anybody who doesn't know, tell everybody about Paddlefest because it looks like a ton of fun. And you got in the water. Did you get out there in the rapids and, and do? Yeah, some stuff? Yeah, yeah. I went uh, through the rapids on the like in the pool toy floaty race. Mm-hmm. Um, so not in, on like a kayak or anything. Yeah, I want to do that. Just I want to do the floaty race. Held onto a floaty and tried to race through the rapids. Yes. Yes. you didn't find the Loch Ness monster. Sarah was wearing it in the pool toy race, uh, the ah. blue and green Nessie type thing. Oh, Very nice. Yeah, it was finished, occupied. Finished at the top ten. That's uh, pretty good. Oh, number wow. one was a guy on a peacock. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't no, beat that. Mm-hmm. Number two was, I don't know, some random thing. Number three was a floating poo. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it was a solid event. Uh, they also had the jousting, which is my favorite, I think, where you use everybody. Uh, you have two people, each on a stand-up paddleboard, yep. and then they use the paddles to joust with each other. And That looks like that so dangerous. much fun. Yeah. Covered in foam. Yeah, I mean, that that sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, um... Covered in foam, and you're wearing a uh, <laughs> oh, life yeah, yeah. preserver and everything. <laughs> yeah, they also do like a swim race where everyone just jumps in the water and swims through the rapids. Um, nice. But yeah, on top of that, of course, the regular like paddle boarding, kayaking, canoeing through the rapids. Sweet. They bring pros up who no one seems to really realize are there. So, and, um, and this year, <laughs> one one dog went through the rapids. Oh wow! One uh, dog. Did, did it win the did race? It, did it make it out? Uh, it, it, as much as it was the only dog. Yes. Yes. Uh, well I'm not, done, not, dog. not entirely sure how the dog ended up doing that, but the dog did make it out. The dog's absolutely fine, but the dog. Uh, <laughs> Became one of the first dogs to take on the rapids. Wow! Somebody just not chucked... our dog, not Penny. Somebody not Penny. Not Penny. We left Penny the safely at home. Let's <laughs> make that clear. Wow! Wow! So seventy-seven percent in favor of good dog now. Yeah, yeah. Wow! Well you should done, touch Penny. on that. That's. A, I mean, I was I was expecting it to be fully like ninety-nine percent good dog, one percent bad dog, and it was someone who's yeah. like telling a joke. But like, there's legitimately people out there who. I think Penny is a bad dog. We'll give a little more time to get your votes in just to I mean, see. But a lot of the votes up. for bad dog were from inside the newsroom. <laughs> it, it must be, yeah, or at least Fair inside enough. the office. Inside the office building. Has AJ yes. voted yet? I do not believe AJ has voted. Oh, well, well, we know how that's going to go. Yeah, is, is there a vote for hate puppies? Is this like, <laughs> yeah, that, bad that'll, dog. that'll be his. Yeah. Oh, is that bad dog? Bad dog. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, we have, uh, we're talking about joining you guys in Paddle Fest next year because yeah. it sounds like a blast Does and sound I blast. really want to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to join and then I'm going to plan my vacation for the exact same time next year. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't oh, wait. Slow pitch. I can't wait. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You guys can much. all join for Dark Sky Festival. Couple of weeks time. Mm. Heading right back oh, down yeah. there. Who's got a telescope? Uh, we're gonna go down. We'll find some telescopes. It'll, they it'll have work telescopes. They've got like big. Oh, they do. They big, just have like, them set actual... up for people. Nice. Oh, okay. yeah, that would be amazing. Telescopes. They've got a little nice. observatory that they named after Roberta Bondar last year. Mm-hmm. They go all way into with Buffalo National Park. Um, so yeah. Nice and dark. And no, yeah. I mean, I, I was in a movie based take, on that place. Learn how to take pictures Never been of there. the aurora and the stars. Astrophotography. Very nice. And then on the way back, we're gonna do the uh, RCMP musical ride in Hay River. Which is coming up. Now I'll skip that. But I will go to the Dark Sky Festival. There might be people from the NWT in it. Oh, pretty cool. It's taking place in the NWT. You There'll be love people from dying. the NWT. You know? Well, because huh? ordinarily you, you, the musical ride, they don't just like draw people locally from the crowd. You understand? I have no idea what that yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know what that so, is. You don't yeah, know what the musical ride is? I had to Google it. It's the so RCMP's uh, Dancing Horse Regiment. Oh. And they do like performances. That sounds useful. Um, it's like the RCMP like becoming as close to a circus act as you can <laughs> imagine. Um <laughs> So yeah, they took. So I Your words, if anybody, not mine. If anybody remembers El Sturco, who used to live and work for Elvis Sturco, El Sturco, oh, used to live and work for RCMP in Young Life. Yes. She's now a member of the Music Right. That's cool. So yeah. they're coming up to Hay River and they're doing a big performance. I think it's the first time they've ever been. Something like that. I've, um, I've so, seen yeah. Dancing Horses. I've never seen the musical uh, musical chairs. Was it RCMP musical? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it. Uh, but I've I seen Dancing love Horses. See the RCMP. The musical Dancing chairs. Horses thing that is would be very fun. strange, where they kind of do like steps and they like lift their knees and they're kind of like. Dip, dip. <laughs> dip, dip, and they go back forward and forward. It's it looks like the horse is enjoying itself. Sounds dressage, yeah. it is called. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. I thought dressage. Was so that used to be my job to report. I got yeah. paid to go to dressage events for like the best part of five. Oh, days. are you going to be doing color commentary on the musical ride? Can if you want. Yeah, I do want. All right. <laughs> Done. All right. I'll talk you through your piaf pirouette. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Like an Edith Piaf pirouette. Pretty much. Je ne regrette rien. It basically is when you spin the horse around in a circle. <laughs> that sounds good. So, je ne regrette la vache? No, that's a cow. Damn it. What's a horse in French? Uh, she, she, no, it's a dog. No, that's a dog. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna do that. That one would work. Uh, Cheval. Le Greta Rien would oh, work way, go. way better Chivaux. with le, le Regrette Chien because it would rhyme uh-huh. a little bit better. I don't know. Laval. 
Is that is that no? That's sure, not. Why not? No. What is horse in French? It's Someone cheval. is screaming at their friend. Cheval. Fairly sure. Like Maurice Chevalier was Maurice horse, horse, horse person. Yes. We're all looking it up right now. Somebody's screaming at their phone. You uneducated Canadian. Yeah, Chevelle. Chevelle. There you go. There you go. Well, <laughs> Ollie's right once again. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca and by following the Mornings at the Cabin Facebook page.